Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. It's SOD Mad Haven. S O D. Sorry, I had to make that very clear. Someone was like, Mad. That's S. S O S O City? No, it's S O D. Sorry, I had to clear that up. <laughs> it's S O D. <laughs> um, I'm just getting off work, and I know how much of a slacker I am whenever it comes down to putting out content, and, you know, just. I'm, I'm not a news channel. Not I'm I'm a person who's going to invest, you know, a good amount of time inside of a tank before I do a review on it. I want to make sure that the information I bring you is on point. I know that for people who are newer to the game, I might be a little bit difficult to understand at times. And for people that are a little bit average, it's pretty much the same way. My brain is just like on full throttle. Ninety five. No. Yeah. Ninety five percent of the time. Uh, it just never slows down. I, I get home, I sleep for like five hours, I get up, I go to work, I hit my head today, I got a blood spot. Yeah. But, you know, it's like I, I play World of Tanks because I enjoy the community, I enjoy the competitive aspect of it, and everything else. I've been playing for eight years. I mean, I don't have all the tier 10s, but I'm a slacker. What, what else can I say? Um, other than that, today I'm going to be bringing you guys a match in the Object 907. Uh, this is a match I kind of feel like there weren't really a lot of mistakes. The plays that were made, the strategy that was put together, the team coming together near the end to work together to get the win, and honestly, just a fantastic match. Now, before we start that, um, equipment-wise, perks-wise, as I actually had to remember to lock the rotatingness that they implemented into the game. We're going to be using advanced optics, advanced loader, and improved ventilation on the 907. Really basic loadout. Ammunition loadout, we're looking at 20, 20, and 5. Honestly, I don't really feel like I need the 5 high explosives, but I have ran into moments that having those 5 just could not be beat. It just, you know, you see a waffle and you think to yourself, I got HE. Oh, this is going to be fun. And, and you, you just do it, you know? Other than that, we're going to be jumping over to Commander, taking a look at the skills. This is my Russian crew. They have not changed much. One perk has changed. So we're using Born Leader, Rapid Loading, Run and Gun, Steady Aim, Snapshot, Sixth Sense, Situational Awareness, Track Mechanic, Off-Road Driving. Off-Road Driving used to be Clutch Braking, but I changed it because originally in the IS-7, um, I decided to try out a new build in the IS-7 and sacrificing the accuracy perks. Um, I, I, I just felt like only changing one perk, not the entire crew. Um, but in all honesty, you don't need all the accuracy perks in the game to make your gun good. Uh, learning the way your gun reacts in situations, you can kind of sacrifice all the accuracy and just focus a little bit more on like an enhanced gun lane drive and just learn how long it takes before your bloom hits that perfect point to risk a 50-50 or add an extra 10% to your uh, accuracy and risk a 70-30. So really, it's just like, rather than doing your equipment and thinking to yourself, oh, uh, if I take this one piece of equipment, that gives me access to three different perks. So uh, keep it in mind, you don't need all the accuracy perks. You can get away with running one thing of equipment to help you kind of boost your gun and then get used to the way it fills and then have a couple free extra slots inside your skills. Uh, I will be going over that later down the future. I actually still don't feel comfortable doing it entirely yet, but I, uh, everyone I play with tells me otherwise. Um, I guess I doubt myself, and I just realized... Yeah, I burnt the other half of my eyebrow off the other day. Like, a couple months ago, and it hasn't grown back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of happy I still have the hair, though. <laughs> Feeling kind of bummy. I need I need a haircut. I really do. Jesus. Well, we're, we're not here to talk about my hair, or the fact that I burnt half an eyebrow off. We're here, we're here to go over a match on Mountain Pass, and just because I can now, uh, no, you do not get to stare at the eyebrow. That's my eyebrow. Okay, I'll stare at my eyebrow on my own time, and then become self-conscious of the fact that it's halfway burnt off. At least it doesn't smell like burnt hair anymore. 
But the 907, this medium tank, it, for, let's say, an average player, I wouldn't really recommend to say, go get your hands on the 907. Uh, 450,000 free experience. There's better choices out there. You have the Object 260 on top of that. If you don't have the 279E, uh, they're really, really scary tanks to go up against if you're versing someone who knows how to play the 279E. It's really all about keeping them underneath your gun depression to max out your armor. And with the 55mm of lower armor underneath the tank, the only things that are going to be pinning you underneath there is the Jagdpanzer E100 and any other guns within that category. So like the 4005, the Death Star, so the FE183, and the uh, Strum Tiger doesn't have an AP shell. Thank God. If it did, that thing would be overmatching 100mm plates. So, kind of happy they thought that through and decided to say, hey, heat rounds and high explosives. But, the 907, as my voice just took the weirdest turn possible, I'm kind of looking around, thinking to myself, do, do I want to push? Do I want to hold back? Uh, looking at the mini-map, I don't have a lot of the team near me. And immediately, someone's saying falling back. I'm pretty sure that they meant that for me. I do remember seeing this. Um, this match was played a good three months ago. And originally I wanted to go over a little series showing off some of the uh, premium tanks in game at tier 10 that you guys can get your hands on, but I never really had enough time to be able to do that because I was on graveyard, swing, days, rotation, Christmas was coming up, everything else was coming up, so I had a lot of stuff that I was doing. But now that I have these replays, and I had some really good matches inside them. I'm able to show off a lot of situations that you guys probably would not think about. So seeing that I'm the only person there, I know it's time to fall back. Now, I have not rewatched this replay entirely through. I have a couple ideas what happened. But I do know this position right here on this flank, if you can do an early position and you can get a couple shots off. Another thing is... Um, the position to my right with all the trees, if you knock those trees down towards the left side of the rock with the bushes, you can actually take a heavy tank and side scrape off the rock on the right side and never get detected. You can do it in almost any tank as long as you back up behind the tree line that you drop and you're shooting through the bushes and they're all solid whenever you look at them rather than a little bit transparent. Um, it provides so much concealment that from this position, you're able to shoot a Death Star round without even being spotted. So for anyone who wants to try that out later in the future, it is something you can do if you feel like this flank is going to be falling apart and you want an early bird shot and maybe you have a little bit of support, you get a longer reload, it's a great spot to go to. Now, seeing that I have the 752 pushing up with me, um, I do know that if he has a fully trained crew and if he's set up correctly, he does have a reload in the range of 27 seconds. Honestly, um, I've been playing the 752 a lot more, and I'm falling in love with it. Now, against the M103 here, I know he's not fully upgraded. I know this because the first time he shot me, I only lost a couple hundred hit points rather than 400. So I felt a little bit comfortable pushing up on him. And now here comes the bat chat. Okay, so I know the mobility of this tank. We're using clutch braking. Not off-road driving, so the bad chat. I just want to outperform him by going around the rock. And as you guys can see here, he did not want to play around anymore. He wants to try and do as much damage as he can to me. And now I just need to get out of that situation, you know, because the bad chat's still loaded. He's saving this clip. We didn't see any shots get fired. I'm trying to maintain a 45-degree angle there. There we go. And we get one ricochet off of him for 300. So he wasn't fully upgraded. He still had the, uh, well, what is the gun on that prior? The, oh, is it a 100 millimeter? It, it, if you guys know, uh, drop it down in the comment section. I can't remember what gun the Bat Chat has starting off before it's fully over. I'll probably take a look after this video, but for anyone who watches this, um, let me know in the comments because I might actually just be a Muppet and let you guys tell me because I, I just got home and I want to take a shower with my luscious locks and make sure I'm, you know, so clean and so fresh. Because, you know, it's after work, taking a shower is the best thing to do. Now, 
We're already up to 2,500 damage. 27, almost 2,800 damage. Sorry, never mind. Really good snapshot there. Um, let's see if we can get a second. And looking at the mini map, just trying to follow his movements. We know that he's not around the corner yet, but getting better positioning. And another thing is, five degrees of gun depression is not a limiting factor in any situation. If you can learn to use five degrees of gun depression, then you will be able to play any tank in this game to the fullest, no matter its gun depression, unless it's artillery. That's, that's about it. So now we're seeing the 705. We're trying to put a shot into the hatch and immediately we're gonna be swapping over to the heat rounds because we are running low on APCR. Now, with the 705, I do know with the 300, and I believe it's 30, yeah, 330 heat pin, we're able to go through the cheeks of the turret because the 705, he doesn't have a super thick turret, but it's thick enough to handle um, a couple of rounds, you know, but once you load the heat pin, uh, 705, it tends to suffer a little bit unless you're inside the tier 10. Or if you're in the 705 and you have the fully upgraded turret. But from what I can see here, he does not have the fully upgraded turret. So we are able to put heat rounds through the cheeks of his turret. And we're going to be using that against him along with the concealment that the 907 has. And the lack of view range the 705 has. I said has a lot. And I just noticed that. Yeah, alright. It is what it is. At least it's not pain god going um every single two seconds. Um, good hit for 299 into the cheek. And there we go. Now that he's down to 94 hit points, as we just completely abused our ability with our 330 heat pin, now it's kind of time to push him. It's down to 3 versus 6 right now, but the enemy team, they've got 3 artillery, so really it's down to a 2 versus, two versus 3, and taking down the 705 is going to make it down to a, and it's a bounce we can drop the 705a without really risking too many of our hit points it's going to really even out this match and here i am close quarters um still learning the 705's armor model um i shot the gun mantle i shot probably the most angled part on the hatch if i was using standard rounds i probably would have gone through and right there all i wanted to do with the artillery was i wanted to pull around that corner and wait to be unspotted because I know artillery is going to be trying to track me so make it seem like I'm going down the bridge. Now, this situation, you know, we're, we're down to a 3 versus 5. 3 artillery is in the enemy team. There's 2 mobile tanks per team. So really, it's down to a 2 versus 2 as long as we can avoid exposing ourselves. Now, against the VK here, kind of wondering if I'm going to aim for the track. Yes, I do. And lucky for me, I damaged the track, and the 752 puts a shot into the track as well, breaking the tracks immediately. So that VK, what would have been better for the VK is, rather than coming over the hill against an autoloader, and then a very fast fire rate Russian medium that has a heavy turret, well, not really a heavy turret, turret on this tank is a little mediocre, but if played right, it can be a very strong turret. The hull armor... It's not really meant to go head-on. You kind of want to maintain a little bit of an angle to force the shots to ricochet. But what the, what the Object 907 really offers on the field is just pure mobility. I mean, look at this thing go. We're going, 50, we're going 63 downhill at the fastest. Now, I do remember this. I'm saying defend the base, marking it. And I'm waiting. Okay. Affirmative from uh, if Ifard, I believe his uh, gamertag is. Um, during this time, I was also a part of Decoy playing in Global Map. I did have a lot of fun playing with them, but the second that I got put on Swing Shift, I was no longer able to participate in Global Map, so I let them know. I dropped out of the clan. I went back to BMOH, because I'm the leader of BMOH, and I just set it all up. But I, I let Decoy know that I'm going to be jumping out because I will not be able to play anymore. But the 752, since he's back at base, it makes me a little bit more comfortable knowing that I can push. And knowing that the enemy team has a badger and three artillery, I don't want to be too risky just in case the badger's going to be cutting through the mid or he's going to be coming up from behind. 
I want to provide a little bit of view range because I know that where the 752 is right now, if the Badger spots him, it, it's going to be making a big difference because he's on top of the hill. The Badger's got some time that he's got to move. And this is also before the Badger was buffed with its reload, which really the reload buff didn't apply a whole lot to the tank other than the fact that now it can permanently track people. Badger, if you guys are ready for that tank, or if you have it, it is an absolutely fantastic tank. And here I am thinking the one tank on the base is the Badger that was capping it out, but it was actually only the artillery. So now that I know that there's nothing there, I'm actually still driving there. I don't know that yet. Because I want to come over the hill. I want to spot. I want to see if the Badger is nearby. <clears throat> Okay, since I didn't spot anything out, I'm going to turn back around and I'm going to head straight to their base. My goal is to try and get on their cap because I don't know where the badger is. I want to try and force the badger out. And as you can see, I'm marking locations. I do believe the uh, four position I just labeled was for the artillery because I want to get a little bit of artillery support. And there we go. Really good snapshot into the T-92. Honestly, that's like a one out of ten shot. I guess I can't really say 1 out of 10. It almost feels like that those hit a lot. And right here against the Badger, I know that I have 508 hit points. I know the Badger's got a really gnarly alpha, and I kind of just want to try and bait a shell. He puts a shot into the top of our hatch, but there we go. We put a heat round into his lower plate for a total outcome this match of 5,400 and what was that? 49 damage? Along with 819 assistance. But a, a match like this, you know, um, sure, you guys can see 5k matches pop up. You can see some other things pop up. But when the team near the end of the game comes together like that and you have organization, people listening to call outs you're making or just really working as a team. Matches like this are, in my opinion, some of the funnest matches you can ever experience not to mention that match was over 12 minutes long and usually you don't end up in matches that take that long you know that's kind of the entire reason why i made my channel i want to educate everyone who comes here i'm not even monetized yet i take the time out to do everything that i can on my channel to help you guys you know, if a new tank comes out, guess what? I'm going to tell you my exact opinion on that tank. And I'm not just going to play three, four matches in it, record those three, four matches in it, and be like, oh, this is my review. No, my reviews are thought out, and the time is taken to put into them. Because I have a rule of thumb. I need to play 50 matches in a tank before I review it. And um, some of my friends now kind of just sit there and look at other content creators and go, Oh, he doesn't know what he's talking about. A lot of them do. Okay. Don't get me wrong. They do. But me, it, it's it's how I do things. You know, you guys can go look up your videos and do whatever you want to do. And check everything else out. I have no problem with that. For crying out loud, Slab of Fish is awesome. Okay. Petty 360 he does kind of have a mindset towards accuracy. But the thing is, having your mindset towards accuracy just means that you're not really using every single tank to the fullest potential not every single tank is going to need accuracy um along with that speed bonuses traction system power terrains you know you have some people who are just like full mobility and reload no view range you you need view range depending on your build and everything else that's why i like to take the time out to put stuff together try out stuff it's the reason why you guys see my silver and it never goes up it always goes down because I can't use gold anymore to remove equipment from my tanks. Um, along with that, I can't spend 10 gold to do something different with my cruise. It's, it's just, I have to spend 90 every single time that I do it. And it, it does kind of suck. Um, but there is a lot of things in this game that are just fantastic and for anyone that's actually just getting into it or if you've been playing for quite some time it's it's not a bad game playing it every single day getting to learn it it is a great way to get your attention out because honestly there's not a lot of games coming out that are worth 
buying. In all honesty, I don't see many games coming out that's like I stop and I think to myself, oh, that sounds awesome to me. Sorry, guys, I'm just checking something. Oh, hold on. Actually, let me just say, uh, Regan Storm, 67. Enjoyed the K92, 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 K91 version 2. Um, but it, it's just... I play World of Tanks because I enjoy the game. I really do. There, there's nothing else out there that brings me back. And it's kind of weird to say that I, I played RPGs for years. I played competitive MMOs. I played Call of Duty. I've And yet, the one that always brought me back was World of Tanks. Don't get me wrong. I don't mind the changes. I don't mind the changes at all. Um, if anything, whenever I go back and I look at StarCraft, or Star Trek, sorry, not StarCraft, I've been playing StarCraft quite a bit, and I'm, I'm just a nerd, okay? That, that's all I am. I'm upgrading my computer, I'm a nerd. That's it. That's, that, that, that's it. But, this game always brings me back. Even playing on PC, PC is a completely different ball game, but PC has taught me a couple of things that I'm happy I learned. Because then I can bring it over to console, transition it, and help you guys with what I know. Or at least try to help you guys. I know sometimes I can't be the most clearest person. So if you have questions, drop them down in the comments and I will try my best to answer them for you. Or if there's something you guys want to see, something you guys want me to do, comments. Seriously, let me know. Or if you're in the Discord, drop and send me a message. <laughs> Actually, my hashtag is amazing, 6962. So if you type in um, my YouTube tag, SOD Mad Haven, on Discord with the hashtag 6962, you're sending me a friend request, and I will more than likely accept it. Just please don't make me feel like a complete Muppet again and offer me a Nitro boost. And I accept. And my account gets hacked. Then I have to change my email like five times and then change the password like 20. <laughs> Just don't do that. Okay? Because... Whenever it comes down to electronics, I know how to build a computer. I know my way around settings, everything else, but the thing is, I'm simple-minded and very straightforward. I do not hesitate to say what's on my mind about things, and I have no filter. But whenever I'm on YouTube or I'm on Twitch, I try my best to keep things as professional as I can. So other than that, dude, if you guys like the replay and you want to see more, let me know in the comment section, and seriously, that bad chat. I can't remember what gun I had. That's on my mind now. I gotta look it up. But other than that, you guys, leave a like, comment, subscribe. Uh, seriously, just leave a like. Uh, just kidding. Don't do that. Not in this video. Please don't. I already feel like a Muppet talking about my luscious locks, okay? And my burnt eyebrow. So avoid that one. Hit the disc. Just, just kidding. You guys have a great day, night, afternoon, whatever time you're seeing this. And other than that, I will catch you guys in the battlefield. Seriously. Hope you kill me. Really do. Because it makes me proud. Makes me proud to be a content creator. Knowing that I helped somebody. And don't forget to message me. And let me know you killed me. As long as it's not an artillery. If you kill me in Artie, it don't count. If you kill me in a light tank, uh, it counts. Kill me in uh, two tiers below, you're a god. <laughs> you're a god. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. Other than that, dude, you guys have a fantastic day. And I actually really enjoy the fact that i chose world of tanks as the main game i do for youtube um you know what fun fact really fun fact actually i decided to add up the total of my giveaways on the channel and gold to money um in the past year on world of tanks alone i have given away 1500 dollars worth of in-game content and honestly I want to give away more. Keep in mind my giveaways, I don't plan on doing them uh, on the channel just by saying, hey, I'm giving this away. But you know what? If you're newer to the game, leave a comment. Let me know. Leave your gamer tag. And guess what? I will check out your account in Watch Stars. By the way, I recommend to use Watch Stars. It's an amazing application. I'm going to be doing a video on it, doing a full rundown of how to use it and all the advantages you have of it. Also, yeah. 
But if I look at your account and I see you don't have a lot of tier eights and I take a look at the list and I see what's available, who knows? You might be getting a message from me saying to add me back. Other than that, see you guys in the battlefield. Have a fantastic day.